Hey carvers, are you having trouble sharpening your chain? I'm going to show you the easiest way I've found so far to sharpen your chain like a pro that even a beginner can do. Stay tuned. If you've ever heard somebody say a chain will never be as sharp as it is when it's brand new, that's true. But this technique that I've recently discovered will get it pretty damn close. There's a couple things you're going to need. First thing you're going to need is a stump vise. Uh, now these things are cheap. You can get them right for right around $15. What you do is you pound it right into a stump or a piece of wood or clamp it into your jaw horse and it'll hold your, uh, your chainsaw. You can just use a regular bench vise if you're just sharpening your chains at home or in your garage or shop. But uh, the stump vices are great because you can take them with you if you're working out in the field or if you're carving on someone's property. They're a great way to hold your chainsaw while you sharpen your blade. Uh, next thing you're going to need are the actual grinding bits. Now you can get these. I think I got mine at Home Depot for right around $5. Uh, they come in different sizes uh, for depending on the size of the chain you're using. Uh, you can get them also on like Amazon. You can get like 30 of the bits. I think they're all the same size. But you can get like 30 of them for $10. So they're really cheap and uh, they do the trick. Now the third thing you're going to need is a cordless rotary tool. Now it doesn't have to be cordless, but I like the cordless best because I can take it with me anywhere. And it doesn't have to be an expensive one. You can get them from anywhere from, I don't know, $15 at Walmart. You can get a uh, Harbor Freight has them for $25 or $30. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for $20. It's just a rotary tool. The grinding bit does all the work for you. So you're not, you don't need a lot of torque. Now, if you want to spend the money and get a really good one, then you could use it for carving too. But these cheap ones, really, they're only good for doing the sharpening because you don't need a lot of power. If you're going to want them for carving and stuff, you're going to want to upgrade to a more expensive one. Make sure when you clamp your uh, chainsaw into your uh, stump vise or your bench vise that you're able to move the chain freely because you're going to need to move the chain as you go along sharpening. I always uh, mark the chain where I start so that I know when I come back around and it's ready to switch over to the other side. So I mark it with a sharp ear with one of my Milwaukee uh, dry wet pens, markers. Now just start slow, stick the sharpening bit goes right into the gullet of the tooth. The gullet is shaped like a half moon and the sharpening bit is shaped like a circle. So it nestles in there just perfect and then go by the angle of the tooth as you're sharpening it. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Like I said, the wheel's going to do all the work for you. And on top of every tooth, there's a little engraved slash mark, which shows you the angle in which way you should be pointing the, uh, the bit. And also, if you notice when I'm sharpening, that little nub to the right there that I'm running the bit over, that is called the depth gauge or raker. It's important that you hit that, and I'll tell you why. I wasn't doing that I was just sharpening the tooth itself and I would go and I would sharpen all the teeth and I'd to touch them they were sharp as hell and I was like oh this is going to cut like a hot knife through butter and I'd go to cut and it wasn't any better than before I sharpened it turns out that I wasn't lowering the rakers as I sharpened the teeth and if you don't the rakers got to be low or the depth gauge has to be lower than the tooth itself or it will stop it acts like a stopper almost or it acts like a uh a safety where it won't let the tooth dig into the wood now you got to be careful too you don't want to go too low on the raker or you're going to get a lot of kickback and stuff like that so just as you're doing every tooth just run run the grind or run the, the sharpening bit over the raker a little bit you don't have to do a lot but you just have to keep up with it i wasn't doing that and my chains weren't cut cutting worth a damn and then you just keep doing that until you get to your uh, original starting point. When you see your Sharpie mark, uh, then you know you've gone through that side of the chain. Then you flip over and do the other side of the chain. So that's the best way I have found, personally, in the year I've been doing this, to sharpen them. I was doing them by hand with just the normal files, and it was, I just, you know, I wasn't having much luck with that. Or nothing is as sharp as a brand new chain, but this, uh, you know... This has helped me out quite a bit, and I'm sure it'll help you out if you want to go this route. And that's what I use. I use the, the stump vise, the sharpening bits, and the rotary tool. You can get all three for $50 or less. 
and it's well worth it. I mean, you can go higher end if you want to get a, a you know a higher end rotary tool, but if you're just doing it for sharpening, honestly, you could go with the cheap ones because it's not about the torque or the power of the rotary tool. The bit's going to do all the work for you. So you can get away with the cheap ones, spend less than fifty dollars, and you have a compact, easy way to sharpen your chains no matter where you're at. All right, carvers, I hope that helped. And like I've said before, these are just things that I do. I'm not saying, oh, well, I'm an expert. This is how you should do it. I'm not telling you that at all. I'm just saying this is what works for me. I hope that helped. It's just a tip.